My name is Joe Sertich. I'm the curator of vertebrate paleontology at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, which means I'm basically the curator of dinosaurs. A big part of my job as a museum curator is building collections. And so I'm building collections for my personal research, but I'm also building collections that will support research for the next several centuries, for the next generation of paleontologists. I'm working with Tyler and Kristen out here, and they're part of a, a huge team we have that helps us get fossils from the field, where we are right now, all the way back to our collections facility back at the Denver Museum. My name is Tyler Leeson, and I'm a vertebrate paleontologist at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. I'm one of the curators there, and uh, basically what that means is I get to go out into the field, like we are here, and bring back really amazing fossils, and then I'm in charge of those fossils. I, I take care of the fossils, kind of the, the steward of, uh, of all these fossils that we collect. I am Kristen McKenzie, and I am the curatorial assistant at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. We could easily have hundreds of thousands of fossils that have never been looked at, identified, curated, um, and therefore they're unavailable to science to study. So those are the things I take care of. Here we are in southern Utah in a place called Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument. And if you were to be transported back to this area 76 million years ago, it would look a lot like today's Gulf Coast with big swamps, big tall towering trees, and lush vegetation and vines in between. And so this area is really recognizable, but it's really different, and that's what's really neat when you go back in time, is you can look at these different animals, which are really cool. You've got these really cool horned dinosaurs, you've got tyrannosaurs, you've got duckbill dinosaurs, the big dome-headed pachycephalosaurs. They're all running around in a very familiar scene that has links to today. We're here getting ready for the morning work. Um, sometimes it's slow going, especially after a lot of rain. Well, being in the field isn't easy. You have challenges every, that range it from weather, so we have rain, we have heat, we have heavy winds, we have cold, we have snow. It's a lot of hard work. It's probably not fun to some people, but it's a lot of fun to us. We also have the challenges of just the day-to-day -day operations of keeping people safe. So when you have a crew of 20 to 40 people, you have to keep them all safe, keep them all occupied, um, have a plan, and you have to feed them. And so cooking food for this many people, three meals a day, is a huge, huge effort. Our field camps consist of researchers. We have several scientists out here right now. And helping us, we have students from different colleges and universities around the country. You get a lot of help from volunteers, lots of volunteers, lots, thousands of hours from volunteers, so that helps a lot. The thrill of discovery when you find a fossil is, there's nothing that compares. You're the first person to see that fossil. Sometimes it's a brand new species and you jump around like crazy. You're excited, it's, it's, there's nothing like it in the world. It's hard to, hard to describe, but it's an amazing feeling to, to be that person who discovers a dinosaur. My research is focused on dinosaur ecosystems. So we're looking in, particularly in the Cretaceous, so about 78 million years ago to about 66 million years ago. What's really great about this time period is it's really well preserved. We have a lot of dinosaurs. And it turns out that a lot of these are totally new to science. We're finding new species every year. In fact, out here right now, we're digging up some dinosaurs that could potentially be new species. I'm also working in Africa. So I have projects in Egypt, I have projects in Kenya, and I'm working with collaborators in Tanzania, and even all the way down to uh, Antarctica. We're working on dinosaurs from the very, very southern end of the world. We're looking at the fossil record for many, many different reasons. There's so many reasons to look at it. Uh, one of the most basic things that people are looking at right now are how, how did animals respond to climate change in the past? How, how could we predict that they're going to respond in the future? Um, that's pretty much the hot topic right now, is how can we inform what's going to happen in the future? Paleontology is the one direct window into the past, right? We can, we, we can come out here and we can find the fossils to understand the biodiversity that we had 10 million years ago, 100 million years ago, or even, even much, much older. And that is very, very important because of what's happening now. We have a, a, a huge loss of biodiversity. And how do we know that? How do we know there's a huge loss? Well, we can compare it at different intervals of time 
And we would not have any of that knowledge if it wasn't for paleontology. Uh, and if it wasn't for paleontologists coming out into the field like we are here and excavating all these new species of plants and turtles and dinosaurs. What's really neat about paleontology, and I get this question a lot, haven't we found all the dinosaurs? And right now we're in a, a new golden age of paleontology where not only are we finding new dinosaurs, we're finding them at a rate that's unprecedented. We're finding almost one new dinosaur every two weeks. And now we're just finding some really bizarre animals that nobody expected. Just this last week, there were two major announcements in a major scientific journal that nobody could have predicted. I mean, it just came out of the blue. One was this little pigeon-like dinosaur that didn't have feathers like we expect, but it, rather it had these bat-like wings. Nobody expected that. We had another dinosaur that was just, had this really crazy mosaic evolution of different features. It was a dinosaur that was on the meat-eating side, the theropod side uh, of the tree of life, but it was a plant eater. And so the future is really bright for paleontology. And it doesn't even extend to just finding new dinosaurs. There's a whole new avenue of research in understanding how they grew and how they lived and how they behaved. And so there are now more paleontologists in the world than there ever have been in the past. It's an amazing field and it's growing and getting much more relevant to the modern day because it, it looks at the past and it can apply it to what we see going on around us now. You know, as far as being a female in the world of paleontology, you, st you have to, you have a few things to prove, so you just work hard and <laughs> find your niche, and there's a niche for every single person. It doesn't matter who you are or what your skill is, there is a niche in paleontology. So if you just like to pound rocks or if you have artistic skills, there's a perfect niche for you. If you are this math genius, there's an absolutely perfect niche for you. Um, yeah. This paleontology is really for everybody. Like a lot of paleontologists, I've been a scientist from the beginning. I was always interested in uh, the natural world, trying to figure out how things worked, asking a lot of questions. I love being outside. I love digging in the dirt. And so I really got into paleontology for the first time when I was probably about six or seven. And I went out and dug up some fossil clams. And I just, I was hooked. I was hooked to paleontology. It allowed me to go outside and camp and dig in the dirt and do it professionally, but also answer some really neat questions. And as a scientist, that's really what drives us, answering questions and helping us understand how the world works. The first time I became interested in paleontology or geology was in high school. So as a freshman, I was allowed into this special class, Earth Sciences, wow. Well, my teacher had a, um, a Columbian mammoth femur in the classroom. And that thing, I don't know why, but that thing enamored me. I was so in love with that thing. <laughs> and so dinosaurs didn't get me into this science. The, the Ice Age animals did. I could see mammoths and mastodons walking across, you know, the Palouse Hills or something. And cats, big cats, jumping out at them. I don't know, I could see this in my head, so that's what got me into this. Well, I look at teeth because that's basically what you have in the fossil record that survives. They're hardy, they preserve well. I look at all the bumps and peaks and shapes of the tooth and they all tell me something. They all tell me who they came from, where they're going. I'm more of a systematics person, so I like to look at what characterizes a fossil uh, species, um, how does it relate to all the other ones. Um, just breaking it down to the very basic of how do you know what this is and trying to describe it. And it actually takes a lot longer than you would think. I like big problems. I can see them as a lot of steps and they're easy to tackle, even though they seem impossible. They actually are easy in steps. So you just break it down. So I'm looking at uh, Cyanarctoides because it's an interesting little uh, genera. They kind of look like early raccoons. In fact, they were confused for early raccoons. So they're omnivorous, uh, they're probably tree climbers, but they can morph into anything that the environment demands of them. So, you know, they're cool. <laughs>
I would encourage kids to consider this field because it's it's very accessible as far as uh, basic skills that you can learn. It's none of it is rocket science. Even the math that we use is not rocket science. Um, and once you find something that you love, it doesn't matter what you have to learn to get to study that thing. So I'm not the biggest math whiz, but I will, you know, get out learning any new program I have to, any new statistics, just to get the answers or to try to get to the answers. And you start to find that it's, it actually is fun and it starts to make sense if you're applying it to something you love. I love my job. This is the coolest job that anyone could have. Being a paleontologist, getting to run big field projects like this, making discoveries every day, sending out the crew and having them come back with these beautiful fossils, tyrannosaur jaws, and teeth, and crocodile skulls. It's, it's amazing. It's, every day is a, is a new adventure. Every day is different. And there's, there's nothing that compares to this job. I really love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So this is the most awesome job. I just love coming out here into the Badlands and making discoveries. I mean, you're picking up fossils that no human being has ever seen before. It is very, very unique. But I've been doing this since I was in middle school. You don't have to wait until you're a, a full-fledged scientist. We're always learning. You don't have to wait until you, you've got your PhD or whatever degree behind your, you know, underneath your belt. You can do that now. Go outside, go out, go out into the Badlands, go to the river, go into the forest. There's many discoveries just waiting to be made.